so let us uh, dive into what we call rotational work energy and momentum so it is still under rotational motion but uh, I want you to understand that it falls under rotational work energy and momentum so how does it work okay so this is under conservation of energy as well but I want you to understand that if at all I have um, if at all I have maybe an incline okay so that that's the incline that I have I want you to understand one thing okay so I'm going to have the height let's assume that this is point A this is point B so now we have got the the bow so this bow has got the radius and it is rotating as it is moving under work energy and power I want you to understand and remember that we said the mechanical energy initial which is at point A will be equal to the mechanical energy at point B under conservation of energy there is no friction at all so then we will say potential energy at point A plus potential energy kinetic energy at point A should be equal to the potential energy at point B plus kinetic energy at point B initially we know that it started from rest meaning that I don't have kinetic energy at point A at the same time when I reach at point B I don't expect to have potential energy so this becomes potential energy at point A is equal to kinetic energy at point B this is the concept under work energy and power okay but in this case we're talking about rotational work energy and momentum so one thing I want you to understand here is uh, very simple and straightforward okay so what what I want you to understand here is uh, as the boy is moving from point A to point B quite okay we have got velocity so we expect to have kinetic energy but we're going to have two type of kinetic energy there's what we call the translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy when an object is rotating while moving then we expect it to have what rotational kinetic energy translational kinetic energy is the same kinetic energy that you know that is half mv squared but the rotational kinetic energy is given by half okay it's given by half inertia times angular speed squared initially this is the same because mass is equivalent to rotation uh, inertia velocity the linear velocity is equivalent to uh, angular velocity okay so what happens now is that we use the same concept mechanical energy at point A should be equal to mechanical energy at point B at point A the only energy that I expect to have because it was at rest it was not moving I expect to have potential energy at point B because it was moving when it is moving and and it is rotating we have got two type of kinetic energy so at B we expect to have rotational kinetic energy plus translational kinetic energy so potential energy is m gh being equal to kinetic energy becomes which is rotational kinetic energy becomes i times this squared plus kinetic energy translational that is half mv squared the question is we want to find the question is if the ball starts from rest like we, we we have already said what is the final linear speed they want us to find this v so how can i find that remember i told you that we are talking about a ball previously we were talking about the ball and we said initially i, I told you to say the, the this speed you are going to be given is either you should check the first part of the page or the last part of the page you are going to be given the formula for the inertia so they are going to give you that maybe the solid sphere but in this case we're talking about a ball okay so a ball the formula is 2 over 5 meters per second or meters uh, mass times radius squared okay so now I want you to understand that we are going now to replace this mgh being equal to half inertia is 2 over 5 times this is mass times radius squared but our goal is to find the V remember I gave you these formulas V is equal to WR okay 
So I can divide both sides by R, even here by R, W is equal to V over R. So where there is W, I can replace it with V over R. But it is squared, I need to square it, plus half mass V squared. I can simplify this, MGH being equal to 1 times 2 is, so 2 and 2 can cancel in simple terms. 2 and 2 can cancel and that becomes 1 divided by 5. Then I've got M, R squared, V squared, divided by again R squared. So plus half MV squared, like that. At this point, I can go ahead and cancel the, I can go ahead and cancel the what? The R. So now I have M, GH being equal to, 1 over 5 mv squared plus half mv squared. I can clearly see that I have got half everywhere, or I have got a m everywhere. I can cancel m. If I cancel m, I will remain with g h being equal to 1 over 5 v squared plus 1 over 2 v squared. Now I want to add this. To get rid of that, I can just, the common denominator between these two is 10. So I can just do times 10 everywhere. 10 times GH, that becomes 10 GH. Then 10 times 1 over 5, that becomes 2 V squared. 2 there, that becomes 5 V squared. I can get rid of this. So mostly this question, they'll give you maybe 10 marks. So I can add these guys and that becomes 10 GH, that becomes a 7. V squared, divide both sides by 7, by 7, then that becomes V squared is equal to 10 GH divided by 7. So I can get square roots both sides. V becomes the square root of 10 GH divided by 7. Let's plug in the values. V is equal to 10 times 9.8 times the H is uh, 12. Then divide that by 7. So V becomes... So I have 9.8 times 10 times 12. I divide this answer by 7. The answer I get, I get the square root. So I'm getting 12.96 meters per second. So that becomes my velocity. Now, 